So, uh, my name is James Page. I'm uh, the technical architect for the OpenStack engineering team at Canonical. Uh, I'm going to spend the next 40 minutes talking to you about uh, deployment of OpenStack clouds using Juju and the OpenStack clouds we've developed over the last five years, and, and then subsequent operation and the, and the various flexibility that deploying using this method gives you. Okay, so, and, wh and where we're going between now and 16.04, our next LTS release in three months' time. So, um, let's kick off with um, complexity. So, for those of you who know OpenStack, it's a complex beast. Um, this is a picture that someone came up with about, I don't know, maybe three and a half years ago now. It shows all the core OpenStack components and the various um, connectivity between those components, so messaging, database, um, we've got object storage, image management, um, compute services, volume services, identity, dashboard, all the various different bits and pieces that go to make up an OpenStack cloud, make it a very complex piece to deploy. Um, and that's just a subset. So that doesn't include things like database as a service, um, uh, DNS, secrets management, all the various other new projects that are incubating and becoming part of the wider OpenStack ecosystem of projects. So fortunately, Juju gives us a really nice way to, to model this type of complex um, service-oriented architecture, which is essentially what OpenStack is. And that we can, we can take each of those components, we can model them as a, a charm, so a discrete service, um, and then we can overlay the various non-functional requirements of, of each service, so things like high availability, support for uh, secure, secure endpoints, um, support for things like deploying from source rather than packaging, um, support for multiple OpenStack releases, multiple Ubuntu releases, we can wedge those all into a charm and come up with a very um, succinct, um, focused set of services with very clear relations between them that allow us to deploy an OpenStack cloud using, uh, using Juju. Now, we also overlay a lot of the features that Juju provides us here. Um, so if we're, if we're deploying on hardware with MAS, say on an orange box or in a data center, then we can leverage containers and a lot of the control plane of an OpenStack cloud will run quite happily in containers. So it gives us a really good way of maximizing the use of the underlying physical infrastructure rather than having to have dedicated control servers. So I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail slightly later in, in, my, in my talk. But um, it, it's, it's a good story. And, uh, you know, we've got now 23 charms in the OpenStack charm set that covers all of the core components, um, various supporting services, things like RabbitMQ and um, MySQL are also under the under the, the OpenStack subsection of the, the Charm store, and uh, and it's getting what getting broader. We've got at least two more components in the next three months to, to deliver. However, it's still a complex model, even when we, we do it with with Juju. So, um, running this stuff on the command line is really a no go. You end up with hundreds of commands, lots of shell scripts doing this stuff, and it gets really really tedious, really really tedious. So fortunately, um, Juju gives us a really nice construct for, for encapsulating a model, and that's a bundle. Um, Marco talked about bundles briefly earlier today. It's a bit of an example of a bundle. We've got um, some mach machines that have been defined in the bundle. So this, bundle, this particular bundle just uses four physical servers. And this is taken off the, from the OpenStack bundle on the Juju charm store. Um, it defines a number of services. So I just picked out Ceph here as a, a pertinent service um, within the bundle, but there's another um, 15 in this particular bundle. And then the relations between the services in the bundle. So for each service, we can, we can specify things like the number of units, also where they're going to be placed. So we can specify placement. Mm -hmm. So that, that then relates to the underlying physical servers. And that could also include placement within a container on the underlying physical servers. And this gives us a very repeatable way of encapsulating that model, uh, extracting it, and then testing it. And this is exactly how we test OpenStack on Ubuntu is part of the OpenStack engineering team at Canonical. Um, all of our, our packaging is testing this way, all of our charms and charm updates are tested exactly this way. And we run our own internal QA cloud, which is an OpenStack cloud, and that's bundle deployed and, and managed using Juju as well. So that kind of gets to the point where we've got a nice repeatable process for, for getting a, a, a cloud deployed. Um, but that's really only half the story. So. It's a very short phase of the cloud's life cycle, is, is actually getting it up and running. So then, how do you operate it on an ongoing basis? What are the typical day-to-day -day things you're going to need to do? And, and how does Juju um, help support those things as well, through, through the charts? 
So the first one thing I want to talk about is, is Juju status. Um, it's a relatively new feature. It's come, come in in the last six months or so. Um, I think Juju 124 first introduced this feature. And as, charm, as a charm author, it allows me to express the current state of, of, of a, a particular unit of a service in terms of am I related to the right things? Have those things presented a complete set of data for me to use? So has RabbitMQ given me my credentials and an access IP? Um, once I've got all those things, Present and correct. Then what's the what's the state what's the state of the actual un underlying service that now should be configured and running? Um, and th these are assessed during every hook execution. So every time an event happens on a particular unit in in, in a deployment, but they're also exercised uh, periodically as well. So there's a new hook in for Charm authors called Update Status that runs I think it's every five minutes by default. I'm looking at Marco. He probably knows better than me. But um, it allows the Charm to report regularly on on the status of the services that it's executing. Um, and I'll drop into a demo of that so you can see exactly what that looks like in a minute. But there's a couple of other things. So um, it's very easy to scale out a Juju environment. It's one, of, one of its big features is the ability to add additional compute and storage resources to the scale out points in the cloud. Um, so the job is encapsulate the knowledge on how to do that, and Juju provides the mechanics on actually how that's delivered. So talking to the underlying provider substrate to get the new physical server to then deploy those units on and, and scale out the the, the resources within your open stack cloud. Upgrades. Um, so upgrades in open stack are important. Um, upstream development velocity is a release every six months, which is nicely aligned to Ubuntu. Um, it's been very convenient in terms of uh, charm releases and Ubuntu releases. Um, but it, it does really drive a it needs to drive a mentality. It's designed to drive a mentality of um, you know keeping up, getting the latest features. Each release should be incrementally better than the last one. So having an effective upgrade strategy as part of your operational approach to open stack cloud is really really important. And we have um, a couple of techniques for doing upgrades in the charms. We've had this in place for um, I don't know since probably Essex, believe it or not. So that's back in uh, 2012 we first started doing this, and we can upgrade the individual service components either in a kind of fire and forget manner, if you don't mind a bit of control plane outage, or in a much more orchestrated way. And I'll, I'll, I'll demo those in a second as well. The other thing we've, we've enabled across most of the charms now is the ability to kind of pause and resume the services that are running in any given unit. So say you wanted to do um, some uh, regular package maintenance, doing kind of security patches, new kernels, whatever it might be. You've got the ability to kind of pause a unit <coughs> and run a service, which takes that unit's resources out of, say, a uh, cluster or out of, out of general use so that you can then do active maintenance on, on that unit. So it could be replacing the hard drive, it could be upgrading to let us set, set a kernel fixes, um, it could be anything. Um, but these are all encapsulated in actions. So Juju actions are a way for you to run a well-defined set of um, steps against the units in the cloud, uh, units in the service. Um, and although we've got a core set at the moment, that's we're looking to expand that um, over the next three months as well. And if anybody has great stuff that they always SSH to a server to as part of an OpenStack deployment, please tell us, because we really want those as well. OK, so um, I'm just going to switch out into a, a demo of some of this stuff. Uh, let me place that way a bit. Oh, that didn't work. OK, so um, this is an environment I've got running on my laptop. Um, how does that look? Can anybody see that? Is that a bit small? A bit bigger? Okay, so um, it's um, deployment of um, 17 units. Um, so most of the, the core OpenStack components are in there. I don't have Swift deployed, um, mainly just to save resources a little bit. But um, for each of, the, each of the units, you can see we've, we've got this um, status message being set. So this has been generated by the charm that's running on each unit. And um, during deployment, it, we would have seen a whole load of messages about incomplete relations and missing relations. But this, this is pre-deployed, takes a bit long for me to do it in, in, in presentation. But we can see the unit's marked as active, and it, it's, it's ready. So that, that's <coughs> assessed regularly every five minutes, like I said. And if we kind of focus in on a, a particular service here, um, this is the glance service, so the image service. And um, this one's slightly different in that we've got three units of glance running here. And um, <coughs> is, is, is also clustered, so we're using what's called a subordinate charm to configure our chorusing pacemaker messaging layer and the resources that are required to cluster glance across, across the three units. So that includes things like HA proxy, virtual IPs, that sort of stuff, is all baked into that subordinate 
charm in, in terms of how that's actually configured into the messaging layer. And you see each, each one of those units is reporting the status about its current health. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, kick off an upgrade of a couple of these components. Uh, so we're going to do on Keystone, which is just a single unit, I'm going to upgrade to the latest Metarka snapshot. So um, each of our meals, oh, let me just increase the size of that side. Each of our OpenStack charms has a configuration option called OpenStack Origin, which defines where it's going to pull its software payload from. Um, and we have a um, we backport every OpenStack release to the, the last LTS, so in this case Trusty, um, every six months, so that the latest and greatest is available on a stable Ubuntu platform. So we don't require you to upgrade both Ubuntu and OpenStack every six months. Um, we, we provide OpenStack back to the LTS release every, on a, a supported for 18 months every six months. So um, this OpenStack origin is putting from our cloud archive, which is what we call this, this distribution method. Um, and currently this cloud is running uh, Liberty, and I'm going to push it up to, to Trusty Metarka. And, and what this is going to do is it's going to take the, the units that are part of the Keystone service through that upgrade process. Now, actually in this it's just basically upgrade packages, uh, resync the database and restart the services, so it's relatively simple. Um, for, for some other services that's more complex. Um, and we can also do things like um, support things here, like uh, jumping releases. So. Um, OpenStack generally has a policy that you have to upgrade in series, so you always have to go from one release to the next, you can't hop a release. Um, you actually support that in the charms by modeling that requirement, but abstracting it from the user of the charm. So if you say I want to go from Icehouse to Mataka, it actually steps you through the interim releases transparently uh, before depositing you on, on your final target and making sure that's all exercised correctly. So we'll kick that one off, um, and at the same time, um, I've, I've pre-configured um, the Glance service to do what we call Action Managed Upgrades. Um, so Action Managed Upgrades do that same process, but rather than doing it on the config change hook that runs in parallel on every unit in the service, so if I had multiple Keystone units, it's going to upgrade them all at the same time, so it's going to result in the service outage for a <coughs> time while that upgrade happens. So for Glance, I've, I've put it into Action Managed Upgrade. So basically, I, I can perform the same config option, but that's not actually going to trigger an upgrade until I instruct each unit in turn to start its upgrade process. So this, this as a, a user of the charms, allows me to manage the downtime on each unit that's part of a service, as part of an orchestrated upgrade. Um, so we demoed this first time in, in Tokyo last fall, um, and one of my colleagues did a, um, an upgrade of a cloud running um, a, uh, a Godzilla movie from way back when, streaming from an instance on the cloud, and it was pretty cool. But I'll, I'll just give you the kind of basic semantics for it. So we, um, we do this again during, using actions. Um, so GG action do advance. Uh, So what we can see now is on the, on the first glance unit, we've got the OpenStack upgrade happening. Um, that's executing. It, we should see it go through a couple of state changes as it goes through maintenance, as it's taking the service down and it's actually doing uh, the operation. It's going to jump around a bit because of my routing. Um, <clears throat> and then the, that action is, um, although it's, it's been fired off asynchronously from the command line, it's completely traceable. So um, any tool could then follow that, the progress of that action, wait for it to run to completion, or assess whether it's errored, which is also an acceptable state change for, a, for an action, and, and then trigger the, the next upgrading process. So typically we'd see um, that run to completion, and then we do the same on one and two. And we'll hope that first one finishes before the second one kicks in. Uh, So it gives you the ability to, to, to manage the upgrade process between OpenStack releases in a nice way. Um, I did it to the pause resume action as well. I'm not going to demo that now, but it, it allows you to basically shut down all the services that are running on the node, take it out of the HA proxy load balancer configuration while you do maintenance on a unit. 
Um, that's not complete across all of the charms. Um, <coughs> they're kind of core services that are stateless done. Um, so if you think about pause and resume in the context of a compute node, it's slightly more complicated because you may want to consider things like evacuating the compute node before you do maintenance on it. And um, we'll probably have those as config knobs so you could elect to, to not do that or do that depending on how your cloud's deployed. Okay, so we'll leave that running, come back to it in a second. Oh, it's not right. Okay, so we talked about the complexity of OpenStack and, and um, the operational requirements and, and how Juju might fulfill some of those and, and the charms might fulfill some of those. Let's talk about the flexibility that, that using charms and Juju gives you. Um, so the first thing I want to touch on is hypervisor choice. And the plan I've got deployed is based on the Virt and KVM, which is pretty much the reference upstream and OpenStack. Um, but we also have charms that, that deliver um, other hypervisor choices. So uh, VMware via a vSphere integration, um, Hyper-V um, for, for virtualization on Windows, um, and, and LexD. So LexD is the container hypervisor that we've been working on for the last 18 months or so. Um, which plugs in pretty much exactly the same way as KVM does, but instead of using KVM instances, it's using LexC containers to provide instances on the cloud. So by having this kind of pluggable model, we can, we can deploy clouds with different hypervisor types. We can also deploy clouds that have multiple hypervisors within them. So we can mix LexC with KVM. We're also going to be doing some work um, with the guys at CloudBase to, to make sure we can do Hyper-V within, within a single region, giving you a choice on where your workload lands. So if it's a Windows workload, it might make more sense for it to run, run on a Hyper-V node. Whereas if it's a very lightweight Linux workload, you want to shove it on a container so you can get maximum density out of the underlying hardware infrastructure. We can support all these concepts via the Nova Compute Charm and subordinates um, within an OpenStack deployment. We also have quite a lot of choice in terms of SDA. Um, so the, the first one we implemented was a reference implementation uh, based on the Open Vsearch project, um, which is pretty much what all gating happens on upstream these days. Um, but we've had engagements through Canonical's oil program um, with at least those six uh, SDM vendors. Uh, they, they now have their solutions charmed up as well, or they're in review. We haven't got quite all of them landed yet. Um, and they have um, appropriate integrations into um, the, open, the core OpenStack charms to enable different SDN options as part of an OpenStack cloud. So if you want to try the latest and greatest from Plumbridge or Calico, those are already in Charm Store. New Arjun Midnet are in flight. I think I'm going to be reviewing on Wednesday for those. Uh, and NSX has been there for a while, and so has Juniper. So there's quite a lot of choice there in terms of the SDN solution that you're going to use on your cloud. Is it more than only NSX? Sorry? You support more than only NSX, the old SNIC run stack? Uh, so we, s the initial integration was done for NSX on KVM, but it also works across NSX running on vSphere as well. So you can do a, uh, a vSphere KVM cloud running the NSX network virtualization encompassing both hypervisor types. In fact, that's pretty much the only way you can do it um, with open vSwitch on the KVM side right now without reverting back to Nova networking. So there was always kind of limitations in, in the choices you make, but for um, especially when you're going cross hypervisor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, other, the other thing that gives us, <coughs> Juju and Charms gives us is great flexibility on how we place the components we're deploying. Um, so this is a pretty classic um, segregated control plane and storage architecture. So um, in this architecture, you're typically going to dedicate a smaller number of um, pieces of hardware to running the control plane. And then you want to run each of those services in a, in a highly available configuration across the underlying physical server as well. They're obviously completely physically segregated from tenant instances on compute nodes. And then you might have uh, Ceph storage servers as well, providing a fully segregated um, architecture. Um, so you, you know, your storage services are just storage services, compute, and there's no overlap between the two. And, and we can do this with the charms today, that's fine. It's a completely supported configuration option and, and the way we encapsulate each service and, and overlay things like high availability means that that's really easy to deploy. But we can also do things like this. It's what I call the converged architecture. So th this is where rather than having dedicated storage compute and control plane servers, um, we actually just have servers and we run both compute and storage on the underlying hardware, um, kind of maximizing the usage of the, the physical server resources. 
And then we spread the control plane as thinly as we can across all the physical resources that are available in the data center. So if you think about a cloud that's maybe running thousands of physical servers, and the requirement for the control plane is around 25 containers for a minimal HA configuration, the, the density of the, any control plane component on any physical server resource is tiny. So we can, we can basically spread all 25 containers across 25 physical servers. The, the, Im, the likelihood of a physical server failure impacting a large amount of the control plane, which the first architecture suffers from, is much more minimized by taking this approach. There are a number of other issues, like how do I make sure my tenant resources aren't going to contend with my control plane, and how do I manage contention between compute and storage resources. Um, but those, those are solvable problems. Um, with things, because we're containerizing everything, we can give things, give things in, in the control plane that's running containers a high share or higher priority against underlying compute instances in, when there is contention between resources on the physical server structure. So this kind of makes your cloud <coughs> completely homogenous. You go same physical service for everything. You can just buy the same spec, just rev it whenever you want, expand it, spread your nodes as far and wide as possible, provide a very highly scalable and highly distributed and flexible cloud architecture. And again, we can do this very, very easily with, with um, unit placement and, and, and MAS and Juju. It becomes very easy to do. OK, so. Um, what have we got coming next? Um, we just delivered, um, we, we, our charms are delivered on a three month cadence, so we try and put out a feature release of charms every, every three months for the, the OpenStack charms. We've just delivered our January release, which was mainly um, bug fixes, some minor features from our previous release last October, alongside Ubuntu 1510. Um, for 1604, we've got some, some feature work that we're, we're looking to finish off. Um, first thing that probably worth noting is we're about to move our development process upstream under the OpenStack project. So we've been very launchpad oriented due to our background um, around how we do charm development to date. So it's been bizarre and launchpad and merge proposals. Um, we've had a plan to move things to Git, the Git Garrick workflow that's popular under the OpenStack project for a, for a while now because we have a number of partners who work with us who are incredibly familiar with working upstream and then they have to come do this alien thing with us in launchpad and it, it means the on-ramp is much, much harder. So by moving our development process upstream, we have to enable um, charm development for a wider ecosystem of people who want to both use and contribute to the charms, whereas they're not going to have to go and learn bizarre and merge proposal for launchpad anymore. So we'll probably still do our bug tracking on launchpad, as the OpenStack project does, but our, our development process will <laughs> essentially move upstream under the OpenStack umbrella in the next two weeks, right? right. <laughs> um, <coughs> Our charms have been uh, Keystone V2 oriented. So the V2, V3 refers to the API version of Keystone, which is the identity service within, within OpenStack. Uh, V2 has been around since Keystone started um, as a project with it under that umbrella. Uh, V3 introduces some new features in terms of the ability to be able to group um, sets of users and projects into domains and then delegate administration for all those things. Um, so we're going to be enabling version 3 support. It won't be on by default for our 1604 release, but you'll be able to toggle it on with a config option in the Keystone charm, and then it will then just push that out to the rest of the deployed cloud. And that will enable us to also um, support Keystone Federation. So this ability to be able to federate identity, either with an external identity provider doing the authentication, and then the individual Keystone instances then doing the authorization for resources, or between Keystone instances as well. So Keystone acting either as a consumer of an identity service or providing the identity service as well. We've got quite a bit of work to do on that, but um, I'm optimistic that we should get that in for our 1604 release in three months' time. Uh, more actions. Um, we've got some work to finish on the pause resume side of stuff for the more complex use cases. Um, and we've got a number of um, internal departments that are chomping a bit to contribute general maintenance operations back to the charm. So Things, anything you SSH to a server to do is a candidate for an action. Um, so we've got a long list of stuff to work through there. I'm hoping to get them to contribute those back directly into the charms as well. Juju storage. Um, Micro touched on this at the beginning of uh, this afternoon, but uh, Juju um, to date has been so much about modeling infrastructure, services that are running on them, the, you know, the compute resources. 
Um, but um, in the last six months, it's grown support for, for, for modeling storage as part of that story as well. So we have quite a lot of charms in the OpenStack charm set that require storage. So things like Ceph, um, maybe Compute has some storage options. Um, Swift, uh, the object storage tool, has consumes block devices from underlying physical um, server resources as well. So we've had a config option approach to with whitelists of block devices, which is very um, it's a very blunt instrument to, to tailor what which e what block devices each unit in a in a service should be using. GG Storage is, makes that much more focused, so we can attach volumes to a particular unit in the service. Because GG, in conjunction with MAS, will, will know exactly what block devices are on each server, it will be um, a much more concise, orchestrated approach to, to storage, rather than providing a whitelist of block devices and hoping that they're on the <coughs> servers you're trying to deploy your unit to. So um, it'll give us a, a much, much more concise, nice story, with storage as part of the model for, for, for deploying OpenStack. <coughs> And we're going to have the same thing for networking. So um, we've had support for um, network segregation of traffic flows within the OpenStack Cloud and the OpenStack Charms for a while now. That's, again, it's been config delivered. It's been reliant on networking spaces in the underlying servers being configured correctly for that to work properly. Um, but Juju is going to start doing that as, a, as part of the model as well. So through the concept of spaces and subnets, so a space is a collection of subnets of, a, of equivalent status, so think DMZ, um, PCI, backend network, database network, application server network, with, a, with um, good routing between them so that they, they, the units within, within a subnet can, within a space can all see each other transparently. Um, we'll be introduced, well, we've, we've got a, a prototype of that for the Ceph charm, which we've been working on, um, which you'll see on Wednesday if you're around. Um, we'll, we'll be pushing that out to include all the API services. So each API service in OpenStack Cloud can register three types of endpoint, a public endpoint, an internal endpoint, and an admin endpoint. And it's quite common to see those bound onto different networks within a, a data center topology. Um, so we'll be able to do that in conjunction with containers. So there's some good tricks there to happen still, but um, by the time we get to 1604, we should have first class networking support via Juju across all of the charms as well. Got two new components, as I mentioned. So, Designate is the uh, DNS as a service component for, for OpenStack, and um, Barbican is the, the secrets management service. Um, they're, they're new ventures for us in the OpenStack Charm team because we're taking um, the time to develop our layer strategy for OpenStack Charm. So, Marco talked about layers and interfaces and the reactive framework. These are our first, first two charms that will utilize all of that infrastructure and should provide a very solid base for introduction of new services in the future will be much more lightweight, but also um, for um, SDN vendors or storage vendors, when they want to want to write their charm to get <coughs> fit into our OpenStack story, the, the, the kind of onboard and all the boilerplate they're going to need to write is going to be much, much smaller because they're just going to be able to consume a layer with their interaction points. So either up onto the compute hypervisor or into Cinder, or whatever part of OpenStack they need to integrate into. We should have a base layer they can inherit from to get all the core functionality, and then all they've got to worry about is that, that kind of final step to do their, their configuration or um, you know, plug in their backend storage device or put their software down onto a compute you know, to provide the, the layer two edges for overlay networking or whatever it might be. So that delivers us two new principal charms, providing API services and some services part of the cloud, but it also sets us up for a much more pleasant onboarding experience for anybody who's an SDN vendor or a storage vendor. The other thing we've been working on is um, OpenStack in LXD on your laptop. Um, I actually demoed everything on my laptop in LXD containers running a cloud, and I don't think anybody noticed, did they? Apart from it being a little bit sluggish. So um, this is taking an OpenStack bundle and using LXD and the Juju local provider, which manages everything on the, the local host, being able to deploy OpenStack inside containers with full support for running KVM instances, doing open vSwitch networking between containers. Um, it's working flat at the moment. I'm fairly bleeding edge on what I just demoed and it has a few rough edges yet, but um, hopefully we'll have a good story there for being able to stand up a cloud, test cloud topologies without having to have access to either physical servers or clouds that can run OpenStack on top of them, which is the two approaches we've had in the past. Um, you need some good SSD storage to make it nice and fast, but it, it's working pretty sweetly at the moment. Okay, so um, if you want to follow, on, follow along with any of the, the development, we have a particular 
area on ggcharms.com which allows you to consume the tip of any development charm activity we're going we're, we're working on. That includes bundles for deploying OpenStack from, from what we call Next, which is our development set of branches, versus the main OpenStack bundles, which all deploy from the stable charms. So if you want to try anything, please pick from there. If you want to try any of the new features I just talked about, they'll all be appearing there first, and they'll go out of the door at 16.04 in April. Okay, so um, I've left a little bit of time for questions. So if anyone's got any questions, please. Antonio. What was your test cloud? Sorry? What was your test cloud that you're running this on? All oh, right, so um, the test cloud is, is my laptop. Um, and if I just dig into that a little bit more detail, so I'm going to trim this down. So it's a minimal cloud. I've just trimmed out a few things that we didn't need, but it's running basically Ceph, backend storage, Glance in an HA configuration, uh, Keystone, Neutron, it's got a Neutron gateway, which provides an off-south traffic routing. Uh, single compute node, uh, the dashboard, and, and a few other bits and pieces. And I do have some instances running on it. And I should. So uh, 201 last octet is one of the instances running on there. So. Um, it's just running KVM actually on the, on the host, so there's no nested, nested virtualization overhead with running KVM and KVM. Um, we're able to expose the, the KVM facilities of the host into the container so that you can actually run instances from within the container directly on the hardware. So it takes a lot of the overhead out of, out of testing without the requirement for full point. So you're running about 16, 16 containers, 16 containers um, on your laptop, focus yeah. on deployment with networking between them, yep. and then putting KVM inside there so you can test the multi node real open site deployment on your laptop. It's correct. Can you do it top? <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, it's not that bad. Wow. Nice. And uh, can you press one? Suffice to say, when it's installing 16 containers in parallel, that figure on load does go up a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's, made it it's perfect. It's amazing. <laughs> what, was, what was really cool is when you ran the actual command as you would in the cloud to do the glance and the keystone upgrades, he was modeling that on his laptop in a multi node deployment, which is, I thought, I thought that was really cool when I saw you doing that. Yeah, like I said, it's pretty fresh. We, are, we were sprinting in Brussels before POSDEM, and this is one of the sprint objectives we had. So, so that load is basically created by Chrome right now. Yeah. Uh, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> it's probably my presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned something happening Thursday. Is there going to be some uh, release dropping that supports the networking functionality that you're mentioning? So we did a, a release last Thursday for 16.01, which was the bug fix release. This, this is part of our 16.04 delivery. So you can try it now. I've got a branch with some instructions if you want to give it a whiz. But there's still a few rough edges we're working through. So. Where, where did that beta or uh, Alpha 2 come from anyway? Uh, so yeah, this is all Juju uh, built off source. So it's, <laughs> I think I'm working off a branch as well, technically. So. <laughs> Tip of tip of Trump. Yeah. So and, and we work we work pretty closely with the LexD team as well to make sure that LexD is com is creating containers in the right way to support a lot of this this capability. We can't do this with an unprivileged container just yet, but that's the objective. We can run KVM instances <coughs> within unprivileged, but Open vSwitch is a is a kernel change to make that happen, so it's gonna take a little bit longer. You won't find this Juju 2.0 uh, 2 in development, but you will find a 2.0 alpha Juju in development. Right, so what, he, what he's got in, in trunk, it's coming this week, they're kind of a new alpha Juju. Yeah. So um, that's what we mean by it's coming in of this lovely stuff and everything going on is right at the tip of that razor blade leading edge. So um, but unless you do things like, like you could do before, just to be clear, like, What's really awesome here is how many times you guys take something into production and you put it in HA and developers go, well, it worked for me, my local thing, nice and singular. It's not just for OpenStack, but any application that you deploy at, a, at scale, if this with a bundle allows the developer to duplicate that setup, 
with that HA, with the extra logic paths that have to you know, go place about um, which one am I writing to or not writing to, can be completely replicated on a laptop setup. Should be a, I think it's a really great tool for ops to take back to devs to, to trace out these bugs to replicate the systems and make sure that you guys are all on the same page. Any more questions? Uh, how hard would it be to form for all of these patient stack shops to uh, react to the mail? That's a good question. Um, and it, there's like five years of Python development in, in the current OpenStack Charm set. And uh, a lot of the heritage of um, the reactive framework comes from some of the approaches we developed as we developed the OpenStack Charm. It's, it's a revolution in terms of how layers assembly happens, but what the model that reactive is following in terms of assessing state rather than individual hook executions has been something we've been doing in a uh, less transparent way in the OpenStack Charm for a while. That said, the, the cost to migrate everything to layers is not inconsiderable because there's a lot of code and IP that we've invested there and a lot of risk to that migration. We will be looking at that because I believe that layers gives us a much more maintainable model for across the whole charms, which is why we're switching all our new charms to bed that all out and then we'll, we'll probably come up with a plan to migrate the existing charms over sometime in the next 12 months. But it, it may take us a bit longer to get that work completed. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's given you a, uh, a good overview of um, what it looks like to deploy OpenStack with Juju and Charms, how we can provide operations support post deployment, and the flexibility it provides. Um, if <coughs> James, just one question: from the point of view of people writing Charms to integrate to OpenStack, yeah. For example, I've, I've got an SDN and I want to talk to Neutron, or I've got a, a block storage and I want to talk to Cinder. It, is it feasible to provide kind of client layers, interface layers, ahead of thinking yeah, about... Yeah, and in actual fact, you can use layers for that work now. So the, the way we integrate a storage backend or an SDN plugin is via subordinate charms, and that subordinate charm is specific to that SDN or storage provider. So the fact that the principal charm is written in not layers and the subordinates written in layers doesn't matter, because all that matters is the interface between them and making sure that that works well which, because we've got layers and interfaces model is, is model is much, much easier now that we've, we've gone through that work to produce a good set of SDN and storage-based layers to enable that work. So as an SDN vendor, you completely write your charm, your subordinate charm in layers now. You don't write it in, in old-style OpenStack charm. Anymore, so. and, and are all of the right layers in place to kind of facilitate that for people who are focused on OpenStack? Or, or is that work that we could prioritize? So we've got the, the base OpenStack layers in. The actual SDN layers are um, trivial. They're, they're a very small delta on top of that. It's a new interface, and that's pretty much it over some of our existing base layers. So we're just waiting for our next SDN partner to come along to approve that. In fact, we're rewriting one of our own internal integrations. We were doing that over the weekend as well when we were sprinting. Yeah, so the... the um, Open, we've got some um, open daylight charms. They're not; they're still in flight. But um, one of them was written in a very early version of Reactive when we were still exercising that. So we've taken the opportunity to rewrite that using layers <coughs> in Reactive and, and prove that 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 layer approach and how how much how little code you have to write in the base layer to actually finish it off. So. Which of the SDN controller are you going to work with? Um, well, we partner with with multiple SDM providers now. So um, we do we do support Open Daylight. We do that in as um, we can, well we can deploy Open Daylight um, in completely vanilla from upstream. But we also do some work with Cisco for their particular version of Open Daylight. Um, I mean, Midonet, PlumGrid, NSX all have backend SDM controller infrastructure <coughs> that we integrate with as well. Um, so I, I would say we're not picking one in particular, but we're... For example, Contrail or... Yeah. Contrail or so uh, Contrail is, is charmed, um, so you can deploy Juniper's Contrail using charms, and you can integrate that into an open stack file today. Onos? Onos? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> tell, me, uh, tell me afterwards, that's not one I've heard of. So that may just be knowledge gap for me. So. <coughs> Okay, so um, we're around a week. Um, that's my team. If you can't find me, ask them. 
uh, and they're all, most of them are back of the room now, so they'll wait. So if you have any, any questions about OpenStack, the OpenStack charms, how to deploy it, whether XYZ, SDN, or storage solution is supported, then just grab us and ask us. Okay, thanks very much.